Citizen U presents UFO, where you find out. We're the two teachers, and today we're going to find out about the new 114th Congress. Very similar to the 113th Congress, Republicans still in control of the House of Representatives, but the newest feature is Republicans holding a majority of Senate seats. See, Andy, I'm still confused why they call it 114. Seems to me we've had, what, 228 years of Congresses? Well, oh, 228 a, Congresses. House has a two-year term, 114 times 2, mm. 228 years, Dan. Brilliant. But, Andy, what's brilliant about this Congress is it's going to be different. And the difference is the Republicans hold the majority, not just in the House, but also in the Senate. Well, it's going to be different because now the Republicans have fewer excuses to get their legislative ideas through the Congress. But make no mistake— there's always an excuse in the U.S. Congress to not pass legislation. There are so many obstacles, even with one-party control. Expectations are high. John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, he ran into some difficulty in the last Congress, but he could always just say, well, it's that blasted Senate. But, Andy, this time, with Mitch McConnell as the majority leader in the Republican-majority Senate of the 114th Congress, those excuses have gone away. This Congress will be asked to do something, and the citizens will be expecting it. Yeah, John Boehner is going to be more effective. He has 242 seats, which gives the Republicans one of the largest majorities they've ever had in that chamber in the House. John Boehner doesn't have to rely on Tea Party Republicans quite as much as he did in the 113th Congress. But in the Senate, Mitch McConnell with 52 seats, that's a majority that gives him a lot of power. But we know that's still hard to get ideas through the Senate. Andy, I think Boehner and McConnell will have a short leash. The Republican base will be holding high expectations, and they're going to have to deliver here pretty soon. But let's not forget, the person who holds that leash ultimately could be the president of the United States. Well, we know as chief legislator, the president is, has to sign bills in the law, and the president holds the veto pen. You'll hear the threat of a veto used much more often in Obama's last two years in office now that Republicans control both chambers. You know, political science tells us that less than 5% of presidential vetoes are overturned. That Congress has the right to override a veto, but it doesn't happen very often. So here we have the Republicans. They're going to be celebrating the month of January. We've won back the Congress. There will be a huge party in their garden, but the skunk in the garden party is going to be Barack Obama. His garden is the Rose Garden, and expect a number of veto pens to show up. There could be an ink shortage in 2015. And don't, and don't forget, President Obama, with the power of executive orders and executive agreements, can still put pressure on this Republican Congress to address issues like immigration, to address issues like our relationship with Cuba. And he has shown that he is willing to use those other presidential powers to kind of put a little bit of pressure on Congress as well. Maybe we'll need to learn about what powers Congress has to hold the president in check. Say what? Today, you found out about the 114th Congress. We're the two teachers, and until next time... No fancy words, no fancy suits. Plain talk about issues you need to know. Just in time.